1939, with the sun finally setting on the British Empire, the rise of Adolf Hitler held bent on conquering the world, set off Second World War. For Britain, the war came at a time when its colonies were becoming increasingly restive for independence. Many of the colonies refused to sacrifice their sons in a war that would only profit their colonial master. For Britain, defending its vast empire in the face of Axis aggression became a hopeless struggle. But all was not lost for Britain and her allies. This hope in a hopeless situation was provided by the Gorkha regiments of the British Indian Army. While the rest of Indian Army turned their backs in an act of defiance, the Gorkha regiment stood by Britain. This was not the first time that they had come to rescue the British Empire from collapsing. Neither would it be the last one. Before the outbreak of Second World War, for more than 100 years, in the fall and rising, the Gurkhas had been the linchpin, the seat anchor of British Empire. Renowned for courage and fidelity, the events of Second World War once again brought the Gurkhas into action. And in Burma, they were pitted against a Japanese Imperial Army. On challenge, the Japanese, in their drive to enslave the whole of Asia, had taken most of Southeast Asia by storm. In Burma, however, the Japanese tsunami receded in the face of fierce resistance provided by the Gurkhas. The first six Gurkha rifles of the British Indian Army was probably the first one to bear the brunt of Japanese attacks. Rudra Badr Gurung of first six Gurkha rifles, then a 19-year-old grenadier, vividly remembers his brush with the Japanese reconnaissance platoon. Yeah, Japan is the Lord. Japan is the Lord. The first time I was in the first place, I was in the first place. I was in the first place. I was in the first place. Upon learning the presence of Japanese in the vicinity, and despite his officer restraining him, Rudra fired incessantly toward the enemy side. After the firing stopped, the reconnaissance team of his infantry found the dead bodies of the Japanese scattered on the jungle floor. It was largely the enthusiasm, courage and dogged determination of Gorkhas like Rudra that had saved the day for Britain and secured an eventual victory for the Allies in 1945. With the Germans defeated and the spectre of another major war still a distant prospect, the blood, sweat and tears shed by the Gurkhas were quickly forgotten in the euphoria. In 1947, when Britain moved out of India, thousands of Gurkhas like Rudra became liability Sarudra was sent back to Nepal without gratuity and pension, a reward for his valor and sacrifice. His only fault was that he had complained about equal salaries for both the white and the Gorkha soldiers. a proud Gorka, Rudra happily accepted his faith but never went back to the village. Four years of his life in trenches had changed him drastically. Now 75, Rudra does not regret the fact that he fought for the British Empire, but is better about the way he was treated by Britain. Rudra is not alone. 
thousands like him who have thought of serving their entire life for Britain, but who are prematurely sent back, are living a miserable life. Tul Badur Kumar was involved in the famous battle to take control over the Cassino Monastery in Italy. The Battle of Cassino was one of many flashpoints of Second World War, where true Gorkha spirit was demonstrated. With limited water supply and empty stomachs, for months, Tul Badur and his colleagues of first six Gorkha rifles were holed up amidst constant attacks from the German infantry. When the battle was over, out of more than 1,000, only 60 returned from Casino. One of them was Tul Bahadur, a war veteran at the age of 24. He returned to his regiment in Dehradun in India. Upon returning to his barrack, he got a rude awakening from a British officer who told him that he was being given permanent leave to go back to Nepal. His service was no longer needed. Penniless, the hero of Casino, returned back to his homeland like a refugee. Without pension and living and welfare benefit, that is not enough to sustain his family. Tul Bahadur, who is now 80, is puffing the rest of his life in smoke, waiting for the acknowledgement of mistake from the British government. The Second World War far exceeded any of the wars, both in terms of involvement and casualties of Nepalese. The Rana rulers left no stone unturned in their efforts to appease the British government. Nepal, as a sovereign country, had no obligations to join the war, let alone send her citizens in the conflict. But as long as they profited financially and their hold at power remained secure, the Ranas had no qualms in sending thousands of Nepalese youth in the furnace of Second World War. Recruiting officers or Galawals from the British Indian Army were given free access to recruit anyone except lame, blind and infirm. Kulbadru Thapa, who fought in the Middle East during the Second World War and a victim of forced retirement, recounts how he was enticed by Galawal into conscription while he was separating his goats in his villas. Sick and without pension benefits, it took years for Kulbadu to realize that the enemies he fought against had never threatened or attacked his country. He regrets the very day when he joined the British Indian Army. The Second World War made thousands of Nepalese women widows prematurely. The families of more than 2,000 who went missing are still waiting for their loved ones. In the recognition of unique contribution, Epitaph was written utilizing the virtues and valor of Gurkhas. But words only edify the spirit. Words don't fill the stomach. Without compensation and their husbands, thousands of war widows are forced to eke out a precarious existence. Fifawati Limbu and her husband were just married for a year when the war broke out. He joined the army and died after he came back from the war. Fifawati was forced to pick up the pieces. In an age where she should be enjoying the benefits of retired life, Fifawati struggles to make her ends meet by doing back-breaking job. Welfare pension is woefully inadequate, so she supplements her income by supplying the firewood in the local market. There are thousands of war widows who share faith far worse than that of Fifawati. Fifawati, who never married again after the death of her husband, now wish she had married them. 
बादो आशुष में लोले थुलो बोए बंधे हो तो तिब्बत का अंतिम चीन रहा है तेरे के तो जंग बंदा ऐसे तो खोटी बने तेरे के तो जंग बंदा सीधी कहाँ जान अपना भाग बसी जानो पड़े नहीं आई ना ये ऐसी जगह कुछ समय में तो राम तो नाम खोने चाहिए यहाँ ना क्यों लाती क्यों in 1947, with its empire and the web, but still few more colonies to be defended, Britain entered into a formal agreement with Nepal regulating the recruitment process. No sooner had the memories of Second World War gone than in 1948, Britain became embroiled in a bloody confrontation with the communist insurgents in Malaya. Ignoring pain and discomfort, the Gurkhas scurred the jungles of Malaya and became the cornerstone of victory over the communist insurgency. During the 1960s, Britain became involved in various conflicts in Southeast Asia. With it, the ritual recruitment process was once again repeated in the hills of Nepal. The Gurkhas successfully carried the flag for Britain in the theatres of war in Southeast Asia. As the British involvement in Southeast Asia ended, Gurkhas were no longer needed. With the signing of the Treaty of 1947, which guaranteed the job security of the Gurkhas, they were optimistic that the sufferings and insecurity suffered by their fathers in 1947 would not befall them. The Gurkhas, however, could not stop a big redundancy of 10,000 in 1968. The victims were sent back to Nepal without pension and just a peanut sum of 150 pounds as pocket money. One of them was Kesar Bahadur Pun. Earlier, when he joined the army in 1961, he was so overjoyed that he sold all of his few belongings and goats. Kesar returned empty-handed and with no formal education. He is resigned to grind stones to cope the grinding poverty. It is indeed a sad spectacle to watch the pride of British Army in a sorry state. Kesar finds very hard to fathom the reasons for his dismissal. The plight of thousands of Gurkhas forced to retire prematurely has been largely ignored by both the Nepalese and British government. The successive governments in Nepal since 1950 have failed to take up the cause for the Gurkhas. Who were sent home made redundant after 1947 in several different instances, particularly in, um, after the so-called confrontation in the Southeast Asia, Asian region was uh, settled in the late 60s. Uh, more than 6,000 soldiers were sent home without any pensions, uh, only with small amount of gratuities. And the, their case that they should also be eligible for pension is also um, uh, genuine, I think. Uh, their pension amounts might not be, uh, might not have to be equal with uh, those earned by uh, people who um, served a full term, but they should also get pension, there is no doubt, because uh, in many instances, the terms and conditions of service was never made clear to them, and they were made, their, their, their services were terminated without uh, them knowing so uh, and its implications. Therefore, I think there, there is a case to be made uh, for giving them regular pensions. The Gorkha Welfare Scheme, a fund raised for the benefit of ex-Gorkhas by their brethren serving in the British Army, is not enough for those in financial distress. This scheme has failed to cover all of the victims and is discriminatory. Tularam Shrestha used to get welfare pension. But last year, the welfare officer refused to renew his welfare card. The officer reasoned that Tularam was rich enough to look for himself.
तिम्रो बिर्सी यो हेर्न आएको तिम्रो जग्गा जमिन उता जिन्जो घर यो किन कसले त्यत्रो घरमा बस्ने तिमीलाई खान पुग्छ भने तिनी उनीहरूले पल्फेर लिएर अनि त्यहाँ कार्ड दिएर अनि गए उनीहरू यहाँ यसो त्यता फर्केर त्यहीँ चाहिँ पर अघि आउने लिम्बु कर्मा गयो उनीहरूलाई नि अनि कार्डतिर दिए थियो म त अनि गएँ कोही नि वालफेर आउँदा के भनिदियो के गऱ्यो अनि गएर काटिदियो भने भनेर उनीहरूले भन्नु भन्नुभयो अनि त अब गएँ दिएनन् अनि पत्ता थियो त्यो उहाँहरू गिराखिदिए अनि म आएँ Without welfare pension and an ailing wife to look after, series of disappointments have become the part and parcel of Tularam's life. His daughter-in-law has enough troubles of her own to look after Tularam. अब ये रे रे आमेर ले रे दा भरा ये छोरा छोरी पालने समस्या सा तो आम बड़ा पड़ा उनका आना की गर्म For more than 200 years, the Gurkhas have been serving the British interests with unswerving loyalty and courage. Britain, in turn, has always considered the Gurkha regiment as the pride of the British Army. But in practice, he has treated the Gurkhas as nothing but mercenaries or wage laborers. The 1947 tripartite agreement between Britain, India, and Nepal clearly states that. In all matters the Gurkhas should be treated on the same footing as the other units in the parent army. 50 years on discrimination in terms of pensions, promotions and other benefits is going on. The British government has constantly cited the bilateral agreement that they signed separately with India in 1947 as the reason for inequality. The bilateral treaty restricts basic rates of pay for the Gurkhas in the British army. to the indian pay code when the issue of gorkhas arises instead of recognizing the 1947 tripartite treaty the british government harp on the bilateral treaty which effectively negates nepal the original homeland of gorkhas so we have been challenging it british government is time and again forcing making emphatic argument that it is a carry a, a, uh, according to the 1947 treaty Well, what does the 1947 means to the Nepalese and to the Indian? That's different. For Nepalese, the 1947 uh, treaty means the Schedule Three of the treaty, which has made a very explicit promise, very explicit provision of equality of pension, equality of salary, and equality in terms of promotion. But British government is. insistently making argument that the 1947 treaty means the treaty between india and uk neither the uk nor the india has a power to make a treaty to govern the nepal citizen nepal is an independent country and neither a treaty signed in 1947 nor any other documents agreed between india and uk have authority to force nepal citizen and the nepal is government to comply with that because we are the sovereign nation so they cannot make our treaty they cannot make a provision that british government would recruit nepalese people in its army and pay according to the indian pay code is absolutely a bias a absolutely uh, a treaty which is not uh, founded in the international uh, treat international law so that is what we have been challenging and british government uh, has not been able to uh, put a argument in support of their their argument such acts of feet dragging on the part of the british government have galvanized ex gurkhas and their well wishers into action नेपाल को कुने पनि शत्रुता नै नभएको मित्र राष्ट्रको विरुद्धमा लडाइँ गरे त्यो कसको निमित्त लडेका थिए ब्रिटिस साम्राज्यको राज्य विस्तारको निमित्त लडेका थिए जब लडाइँ सकिएपछि एउटा ब्रिटिस जस्तो विश्वको जिम्मेदार राष्ट्रले सोझा निमुखा निरिया युवाहरूलाई लडाइँको आलो घाउसम्म सुक्न नपाउँदै खाली खुट्टा पठाउन मिल्दै कि मिल्दैन अहिले हाम्रो आन्दोलनको मूल 
सवाल बने को यो बिलाय सरकार समझ यो जून सार सूत्रे मार्ग ले रहे रा देश तथा विदेश में समेत विभिन्न कार्यक्रम सहित शांतिपूर्ण आंदोलन गढ़ दे आये हों बात तम्म जून सवाल हमने ब्रिटिश समझ यो उठाए का थों तीस सवाल बने को ब्रिटिश संग पूर्व ग्रही बाहर अथवा प्रतिशोध को भाव में लेने प्रेरित भार उठाए को न गए। हमले समान काम को निमित्त समान आयुष्य किन न पहुंचे बनने उसका आयुष्य को लड़ाई हो तेज बात को नाले जब सम्मा हमरो आयुष्य कायम हो गए ना जब सम्मा हमरे आयुष्य इस्तापना हो गए ना तब सम्मा हमी अपना आंदोलन लाई शांति पुनः आंदोलन लाई निरंतर रूप में अगी बढ़ाई रहनी थों Time and again, the British government have justified inequality in pensions by pointing out the low cost of living in Nepal. The British government takes pride in the fact that it has contributed millions of pounds to the Nepali economy, mainly through the Gurkhas serving in the British Army. But this has come at the cost of Gurkhas' loss of identity. More than 200 years of recruitment in the British Army has undoubtedly transfused the Nepali economy. But the immense damage done to the tribal social structure and culture of the Gorkhas by the recruitment process far outweigh the economic benefits. In recent times, despite the feelings of unease and rancor that have overshadowed the relationship between the Gorkhas and the British government, the trust between the two has weathered the vagaries of time. A veteran of Second World War, Chandraman Limbu, was given assurance by his officer that he would be called back to his regiment after the completion of his leave. He was too simple to comprehend the diplomatic language of his British officer. Chandraman Limbu has patiently waited the last 50 years of his life for the letter of his recall in the army. Chandraman is still hopeful that one day he will receive the desired letter. It was hope, sheer hope to meet their loved ones that had sustained these heroes through the war. Bravest of the brave. Indeed, the world has not seen a friend like Gurkhas. War was not their profession, but their destiny. Now, in their twilight years, a living and the memories, the life in the trenches, hope keeps them going. These war veterans are hoping against hope that one day Britain will rectify its mistakes and restore their dignity. Pakistan, Pakistan, Pakistan.